Kevin married Terry. You can have them all to yourself. Well, of course it did. But I, I, I'd rather have the few moments together that we did have than not to have anything at all. When we were together, it was like... like we were in our own separate world. Kind of like Frisco and Felicia. Oh, oh Frisco, would you stop it? Smitty, you hold your gun and our cop friends here. Come on. Now, listen. If she does anything smart, you know what to do. All right, you got that? The lies in your hands, sister. You get rid of whoever it is. Patrick. Hi. I guess I can't stay too long. Uh, listen, um, I'm really busy with the baby, so could you come back later? Well, look, really? I've got to get the medical van back to the hospital, and I'm going to show up for Frisco's bachelor party, so listen, I can only really? stay a moment. I don't want to come you. on in. Hold it! What's going on? <laughs> Close the door. Hey! You, come on, Mr. Doctor! Eat something. Eat something. If I could just figure out how to connect this to the audio. Um, I am going to go upstairs and help Mrs. Weber with the baby. No way. You'll uh, never figure that gadget out. Shut up, cop. I can help you if you just take the cuffs off me. Sure you could, but those cuffs are staying on. It's a trade-off. I get my circulation back on my wrists and you get to listen in on the police. No dice. Hey, we'll fix it without you. Yeah, shut up, cop, or I'll have you gag. It's about time for the news. What the hell are you doing? You stay. What's going on? What were you trying to do? I was trying to get my body to work again. It gets a little stiff sitting in one place. You're lying, cop. What were you doing? Shh. This is the WLPC news break. We have an update on events following the $2.5 million bank robbery that took place early today in New York City. For those of you who missed the story on the late news, the New York City bank was robbed today by four armed gunmen who escaped in a tan colored van. Police report that the van was spotted entering Port Charles. According to police, one of the robbers was shot by a bank security guard, but escaped with his three cohorts. Port Charles hospitals have been put on alert in case a gunshot victim turns up for medical aid. So far, Port Charles police have no leads. Oh, as right. <laughs> now that's good news. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Listen down. Let's see. I'd just like to split this dump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Come with us, huh? Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Oh, where'd you get such a bad attitude? The babysitter answers it. Go. Come on. Weber's residence? Oh, is that you, Lucy? This is Brian Phillips. Um, hello, Mr. Phillips. Lucy, by any chance, is Patrick O'Connor over there? Um, Patrick? 
Yeah, I met Frisco Jones' surprise bachelor party, and Patrick was supposed to be here. We're trying to find him and get him over here before Officer Vince Viscotti shows up with Frisco. Uh, I, I, I haven't seen him. I, I, I don't know where he could be. <laughs> That's too bad. The party's dwindling. We're about to lose another guest, Chief Ramsey. Um, thank you, Mr. Phillips, for calling, but I, I've already bought tickets to the Police Athletic League event. Um, goodbye, Mr. Phillips. Huh? Thank you. Nice. What happened? Well, she said Patrick wasn't there, but then she made a big point by saying that she had already bought tickets for the Police Athletic League. You figure that one out. Wait a minute. Vince and Frisco, were gonna, they were going to spend the day selling tickets to the pal. Yeah, there was a lot of heat on them to sell a batch of tickets. And not only that, I know that Vince and Frisco were intending to go over to the Webbers to hit him up for a contribution. What? Now, something is going on here. Put the antenna right in there. No, the other way. Right here. No, there. Where? Right there. Okay. Now, be careful. I am careful, and I hope for your sake that this works. Don't worry, it will. Cops, they're here. They're outside. Hang on. Okay, guys. Drop it. Come on. Move the other room. Come on. Move it. Go outside. Nothing funny. Stand up there. Okay, cops. You got one minute to clear the area or we start killing the hostages. Watching the clock. If they don't pull out soon, kill the first two hostages. Which ones? Two cops. Say when. 30 seconds. Get ready, boys. Listen, have you seen Lucy Coe today? Because I've been looking for her. No. No, I haven't. I have been meaning to ask you about that, though. What is the big attraction there? There's no big attraction. You seem to be somewhat fascinated, that's all. I just wondered why. I'm trying to find out what Kevin saw in her. I mean, how could he prefer Lucy over Terry? I mean, she must have had some kind of hold on him. And maybe she influenced him to do the things that he did. Well, I really can't help you there. I've had run-ins with Lucy, as you know, but... I think she definitely had a hold on it. Yes, but what I can't figure out is why. Excuse hey, me, get your Patrick. I'm Frisco. Da da. -dum. What do you think? You look beautiful, Lucy. <laughs> Thanks. I, I didn't really have anything to do with it. I had a couple of the guys over at the studio sort of fix her up. Does she not look wonderful? You look incredible. Well, what's happening here? Who's that beautiful lady? <laughs> it's me, Doctor Weber. <laughs> Lucy. Oh, you look fantastic. What's the occasion? Oh, 
Well, I thought that you would be a lucky gentleman and get to take two gorgeous women out to dinner if you're free. Oh, well, if I have to pay for it, I mean, no, I'll be free very, very short, just a couple minutes, would you excuse me? Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. Well, I guess he beat me to it. I was going to ask you for dinner tonight. Patrick, do you know of anybody who would want Ted Holmes dead? No. I didn't think he had any enemies other than Lucy Cullen. Yeah, I was aware that her and Ted were having some sort of argument about her book. Do you think she would have gone far enough to kill her? Now, that I don't know. All I do know is she's probably responsible for his heart problems. What do you mean by that? Frisco, Ted found out that Lucy had some kind of a side deal working with the publisher on her book, so she didn't have to turn in all her royalties to the Jennifer Talbot wing at the hospital. So, when Ted found out he was furious, he sued her and cut off her assets. Well, that probably didn't make Lucy very happy, did it? Oh, she was livid. They got into a couple of screaming matches, and uh, he wound up in the hospital. Did he have a bad heart? Frisco, we ran a series of tests on him, and everything came up negative. Now, he was under a great deal of stress, and I, which I lay right at the feet of Lucy Co. Especially after yesterday. Why yesterday? Because he gave her a deadline. She was to return the money owed to the foundation by yesterday. Now, as far as I know, she hasn't turned over any money yet. And Ted is dead. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No. Well, I appreciate you for the help. And as soon as I find out about the body, I'll let you know, okay? Right. Thanks again. Frisco, unless you need me for something, I'm going to head back to the office. Yeah, Jake, one question. Think Lucy Coe would have killed Ted Holmes? Patrick, just tell you about the fights between Lucy and Ted? Give me some of the details. What do you think? Well, we both know how capable Lucy is of lying. But murder? I don't know. Okay, completely off the record. How angry was Lucy at Ted Holmes? She knew that Ted was af coming after her with all the legal clout he had. She was furious. Thanks, Jack. Sure thing. See you later. Frisco, are you going to arrest Lucy? Arrest her? <laughs> I just started this investigation, Bobby. I know that. Isn't it obvious to you that she's guilty? Why would you be so convinced that Lucy Coe killed Ted Holmes? Because I know her very well. I've worked with her every day. And she's a greedy, lying little witch. And Ted was standing in her way. And she works here. She had access, she had motive, and she had opportunity. It sounds to me like you've been reading too many of Jake's law books. Yes? But if I were you, I'd still put her at the top of my most wanted list. Now, Bobby, come on. I just started this as I told... Come in. So. <clears throat> Any dirt around the hospital about the argument Ted had with Lucy? Well, you probably already know that they were arguing about her book royalties. I know that. Did you hear anything specifically about the argument they had? No, because I never heard them arguing together. But if it helps you any, I did hear Lucy saying some pretty awful things about Ted. What'd she say? I mean, exactly. Well, it was really kind of funny because I walked into the spa and Lucy was there obviously trying to raise money because she was going to lose her condo. So Claudia suggested that she sell her new diamond watch. She figured it was worth at least $15,000, right? And Lucy said... I'll see Ted Holmes dead before I'll sell that watch. Now, you know that people say things they don't mean when they're angry. Did it sound like a real threat to you? Yeah, when I think about her tone of voice and the look on her face, I think she did mean it. Thank you. 
Lucy, I've been assigned to investigate Ted Holmes' death. I heard. Were you in the hospital yesterday? Yes, of, of course I am. Um, I do work here. Mm -hmm. Did you see Ted? No. Is there anything you can tell me about his death? Frisco, I didn't kill him. Well, do you think I'm accusing you? Well, aren't you? I just want to find out what happened. Why do you think I'm accusing you? Well, because I, um, I, I saw the look of hatred in Patrick and Bobby's eyes, and I know they think I did this, don't they? Lucy, this is just preliminary questioning. Well, they know how much I hated Ted for what he was doing to me, and I, I know a lot of other people knew that, too, which you probably are already well aware of. Well, I knew there were problems with your book. I knew that he had frozen your assets and that you were pretty upset about that. Yes, I was. Were you upset enough to kill him? Frisco, I don't have to answer that. Not without an attorney present. He was taking everything you've worked so hard for. He was trying to ruin your life, wasn't he, Lizzie? Are you, are you accusing me? Because if you are, I want an attorney here. I know my rights. Well, are you? Not yet. I didn't kill him. I heard you. If there aren't any more questions, I'll be going. None for now. But don't leave town, okay? Whoa! Hey, Lucy, good morning. You look terrific this morning. I hate to just barge in like this, but... Well, actually, I uh, can be here legally today. Come here, I got something for you. What is this? Search warrant. Hello, Mr. Post. Good to see you again. Hello, Mr. Jones. Or should I say Detective Jones? Oh, no, there's no reason to be formal now. We'll be seeing each other a lot in the next few days, so let's keep it informal, shall we? Oh, well, why is that? Oh, didn't you hear? Ted Holmes was murdered. Well, what's that got to do with me? Well, I was hoping you could tell me. I really have to be going. You know, I gave a call at your office and they said you weren't around. I, I just sort of thought you might be here. Well, I'm sure you two have a lot to talk about. I'll, I'll leave you alone. As a matter of fact, I will be needing to talk to you pretty soon, Mr. Post. Maybe we can get together at General Hospital later today, huh? I'm not certain I can make that. Well, you can come down to the station. We have a very comfortable interrogation room. Nice chairs. I'll see you in. at the hospital. You know, and they told me in detective school I'd never get any cooperation. Good day, Lucy. Miss... How dare you harass me? Lucy, now come on, I'm just doing my job. Now, harassing is when I'd come in late at night and drag you out of your house and bring you down to the station, and put a big light in front of you, and you tell me your life story. Now, that's plan B. I told you yesterday, Frisco, I didn't kill Ted. I don't even remember asking you that. Well, then what do you want from me? Oh, give me a break, Lucy. This is my first big case, okay? I mean, the ink on my diploma is still wet. You're public enemy number one right now. Break me an easy, will you? Are you playing games with me? No, I'm not playing games, Lucy. What are you doing? Oh. Come on, this has gone far enough. These are mine. I will need those. Well, you have no right to come in here and take these. Do you want to take a look at the search warrant? I am not a lawyer. How do I know it's real? Well, that is a good point. You know, you should be very careful when you're involved in a murder case. I am not involved. That's not what I said. You I... know, if you have a problem with this, you ought to call Chief Devane. She's at General Hospital. I have the number if you want. Wow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Boy, you must have spent a small fortune on this tree, huh? A lot of green in your Christmas this year. You know what I mean? I bought all these ornaments before I lost my money. Yeah. Well, uh, here. Sorry. Well, you're going to have a lot of great presents this year, huh? Can't wait to get mine. You're just like everybody else, aren't you? You believe what Jake said about my contract. Well, you're wrong, and so was Ted Holmes. That money is mine legally, and I can do with it whatever I please. 
Lucy, where were you the evening Ted Holmes was killed? Just say the first thing that comes to your head. It's usually the truth. Well, he threw me off guard. Good. I was, I was at a movie. Which one? Um, the new French film at the Royal Theater. The American Jasmine in Paris. I've heard of that. No. It was about a teacher who falls in love with one of her pupils. Well, you could have read that in review in the paper, you know. I saw the movie, Frisco. Alone? Well, there were people in the theater. Did you go with anyone? No. Uh, what time was the show you went to? It was an 8 o'clock show. That's the theater all the way across town, isn't it? No, it's right near General Hospital. Very good try. Do you mind if I use your phone real quick? Would Thanks. it matter if I said no? Appreciate this. Yeah, this is Detective Frisco Jones. Uh, ring lab for me, will you please? Thanks. Just a minute. Yeah, listen, I'm bringing in a few items shortly. I want you to give them the works, okay? That's right. We'll clear your schedule, okay? I need this report as ASAP. Why are you taking my clothes to the police lab? Lucy. Just tell me what you're looking for. Well, nothing's gonna happen to your clothes. They're gonna come back fitting you better than before I took them, I promise. Oh, listen, um, I feel so silly. Listen, could you, um, could you sign this receipt here? Why? Because I have to do this. This is like going to the grocery store. You have to sign a receipt in order for me to take it. Thank you. I I'm sorry to trouble you. Listen, do you have, um, a picture of yourself around? It doesn't matter. Can oh, this would be perfect. Would you mind if I, if I took, this is a great shot, by the way. I'll have it back to you along with the clothes as soon as I can, okay? Catch you later. Do you need help? That'd be great. Thanks. I just want you to know that I am personally checking out Lucy Goes Alibi. You have anything yet? I should shortly. Listen, I need a favor from you. The lab's supposed to send a messenger to the hospital with a special report for me. Now, if I'm not there in time, could you take care of it for me? Well, yeah, I'm going to be at the hospital most of the afternoon, I should think, and I'll hold on to it, yeah. Great. Listen, with any luck... Oh, listen, I'm going to have to get back to you, okay? Hi. Hi. You want something? Yeah. I'd like a little information, if you don't mind. What kind um, of information? Well, um, these French movies are pretty sexy, aren't they? <laughs> this one is. Yeah, well, I'll have to check it out sometime. <laughs> Take a friend and check out the balcony. That hot, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, um, I don't know if you've ever seen this lady before. No? No? No, this picture doesn't do her justice, really. She's more attractive than this. If you like the type. Well, her hair's a little different now. She wears a lot of jewelry. She said she was in here the day before yesterday. She came in for an evening movie, 8 o'clock. Ring a bell? Wait. What? Yeah. Um, yeah, she handed me a $100 bill That's for a box a of popcorn. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have any idea when she might have left? Uh, yeah. After the movie. You're sure about that? Yeah, I was standing right here with my boyfriend. Oh, uh, would you happen to know if she took off during the movie at all? Maybe came back for something? Um, well, no, I wouldn't, but that doesn't mean she didn't. How's that? <sighs> Look, you won't tell the manager, will you? I really need this job. You left your stand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend and I snuck up to the balcony for the last half of the movie. I couldn't tell you who came or went till the end credits rolled. Well... Thanks, anyway. Uh, do you work here regularly? Why? Well, I just may need to ask you a few more questions in the near future. How about that? Well, I'll, uh, I'll save you a seat in the balcony. A seat in the balcony? <laughs> well, that's, that's awful nice of you. I'm very flattered, but... Oh. I'm married. What were you doing over at Lucy Coe's today? Just comparing stories? Don't try to put words in my mouth. Now, Mr. Post. I know that you and Lucy were trying to divert the royalties on our book. 
I don't have to put up with this. Mr. Post. No one else had anything to gain but you and Lucy Co. by getting Ted Holmes out of the way. Now, if you were me, who would you consider suspects? I refuse to answer any more questions until I've consulted with my attorney. Well, I guess the guilty are even allowed protection under the law, aren't well, they? You're treading on very thin ice, Jones. <laughs> it's the story of my life. You continue to badger me, and I'm going to report you to your superiors. Mr. Post, don't leave poor Charles, okay? Now, would you tell us, please, what you've accomplished so far? I think I'm best qualified to answer that. Up to now, Lucy Coe has been our prime suspect because she's had a motive for wanting Ted Holmes out of the way. But you've changed your mind. No, Dr. Hardy, I've merely broadened the field. I've received a lab report that's shed a little new light on this subject. In what way? The autopsy revealed fibers under the victim's fingernails. Now, I had these fibers analyzed along with clothing that we took from Lucy Coe's apartment in our initial search. There was no match between the clothing nor the fibers. However, there is a match between the fibers and lab coats that this hospital distributes to doctors and other personnel. In other words, anyone who has access to the main supply room could have killed Ted Holmes. Let's go out front. I am telling you, Jones tried to implicate me in Holmes's murder. Did you say anything that would, would make him think that we were in on it together, did you? No, of course not. I'm sorry I ever met you. I should have realized that you were trouble, but all I could see was dollar signs dancing in front of my eyes. Mr. Post, there have been plenty of those. Not nearly enough to make up for all this grief. Don't come running to me next time that you get in over your head. Because we're through, Miss Cole. Goodbye and good riddance. Wait, Mr. Post, you've got to believe me. I never implicated you in Ted Holmes' murder. I, how could I? I don't know anything about it. I swear to you, I am not guilty. Well, then I suggest that you find out who is and fast, because it's your only hope. answer any more questions. I just wanted to let you know that you should have your clothes back no later than this afternoon. Well, does that mean I'm no longer a suspect? Well, I have one question to ask you. Do you wear lab coats around the hospital here? Uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of doctors in them. They're just the regular, normal lab coat, like Buzz has on them. Um, yeah, sometimes. Why? Well, I'll be in touch with you. Lucy, can't this wait? I've got to get back to Felicia. Well, it can't wait. I have evidence that could clear me as a murder suspect. Don't you want to hear it, or am I already convicted? What kind of evidence? If you'll just give me five minutes, I think I can help you with your case. Well, good night. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Goodbye, Robert. Bye. Come on, let's go home. No working on Christmas night. Please. Lucy, you heard my wife. Can't just wait, please. Till tomorrow, maybe? Okay, if you'll just promise me you will see me first thing in the morning. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Frisco, I'm so glad I ran into you. Are, are you leaving right this minute? Um, actually... Uh, look, I'm about to move off. We'll chat later, okay? Thank you, Robert. I have some information for you, but if you don't want to hear it, um, no. I'll just say so. No, I'm very interested in hearing any information that has to do with this murder case. Well, I know I'm in a very awkward spot because I'm very high on your list of suspects, but I know someone else who had a motive and he doesn't have an alibi. He? Well, who might that be? Buzz Stryker. Why don't you come sit down on the music? Look, Frisco, Buzz and Ted fought terribly about a job that Buzz wanted in Walton. Well, what was the problem? Buzz didn't get the job. He had his hopes up so high, and when he didn't get it, he was really upset, and he thought Ted was the one that withdrew his name. Why would Ted do that? He was the one who proposed Buzz, right? Well, that's what made it so hard on Buzz. He felt like that Ted had just led him along and then withdrawn his name because of his drug addiction. 
Well, that doesn't make any sense. Ted knew about Buzz's problem. I know. Maybe, maybe he just got cold feet and changed his mind without telling Buzz. I'll check it out, okay, Lucy? Okay, wait. Frisco, please. There's more. The night that Ted was killed, Buzz was supposedly driving to Pawtuck, but he never got there. How do you know that? Well, why, why don't you just ask Buzz yourself if he'll tell you that is? He claims that he parked on the side of the road and fell asleep. Well, I've done that myself. Maybe that's possible. I am just telling you what I know, but if Buzz didn't have anything to hide, then why didn't he just come right out and tell you all this in the first place? Well, maybe Buzz will. We'll see. In any event, you want to be sure that I know about it, right? Right. I am tired of being the rotten apple in this town. Something goes wrong, and it's Lucy who did it. Lucy, the department make no judgments until all the evidence is in, okay? Fine. I just want to make sure that you have all the evidence, because you're not going to get it from the brownstone. 